Now there's a lot of options to mirror the screen of an Android phone to a Mac or PC, but most of it is just plain garbage because of instability or maybe it's flooded by ads. Now I've recently went through this research to find out what the best solution is and I think I found it. So the software's name is SCR CPUI, which I think stands for Screen Copy. What makes it great is number one, it's completely free, it's open source, so you get the full functionality without paying for anything. There's no ads, there's no paywall, just all goodness. Number two, it's so stable and reliable. It streams 30 to 60 hertz, 1080p and above. Now I haven't tested 60 hertz and 4K phones, so I'm not sure what will happen with that, but the documentation mentioned that it supports 30 to 60 hertz, 1080p and above. I have the Samsung Galaxy A50 here and Google Pixel 3a tested, connected to a MacBook Pro and a Dell Latitude laptop and all setups work flawlessly. Number three, you can interact with the stream, meaning the screen of your phone on your laptop using your mouse, trackpad, keyboard, and the input latency is very minimal. Number four, it's very light, it runs fast, and you don't need to install anything on your phone. Just download or install the package on your computer, run it, and you're good to go. Really, my experience with this has been 100% positive, and I'm wondering why this isn't like everywhere, because a lot of the solutions out there are just really bad, and I, I wanted to share this to everyone. That's why I'm creating this video. So thanks to the folks over at Jenny Mobile and to all the developers who contributed to this open source project because I think this is really useful. Anyway, so now let's go to the setup and installation process. So I've put the link on the card above and on the description box so you can open it and use it as a guide while following through the video. Now, if you're not techie or a developer, some of the steps later might look complex, but don't worry, just follow through step by step and you, you'll be good because once you have it set up or running it next time will be as easy as pressing enter. Now I've broken the process down into four major steps, the first two being the setup and installation, and the last two being the actual using of the application. I'll put timestamps so you can easily reference through the, those parts of the video. So let's start. Step one of four, download or install. Now if you're using Windows, downloading the application is as simple as clicking this link right here to download the zip file, unzip it, and you're good. Now, if you're using any of the major Linux distros, you can just go to terminal, type apt install scr cpy, press enter, and then in a few while, you'll be good. For other Linux distros, there's also more information on the site, so make sure to check it out if you're using Linux. Now, if you're using macOS like I am, you can install screen copy using Homebrew. I'll show you how. If you don't have Homebrew yet, go to brew.sh, which will open the Homebrew homepage, and click on this button right here, which will copy this line of code, and then go ahead and open terminal and paste that code in there and press return. This will install Homebrew into your machine. Don't worry, this is safe. This is a very used package by developers. Now this shouldn't take long depending on your internet connection and then it should prompt you once it's successfully installed. So once you have Homebrew installed, you can go ahead and type brew install scr cpy, which is the command to install screen copy using Homebrew. Now once that's done and it has prompted you that installation has been successful, it's now time to install Android platform tools. So to do that, just copy this line from the site, which is brew cask install Android platform tools, paste it on a terminal, the same terminal that you've been working on, press return, then it will install, it shouldn't take long as well. And then once it's done, you can finally use screen copy. But before that, there's something to configure on the Android phone, and that is enabling ADB or USB debugging. Now, at any point in the steps further, your phone's gonna ask you to enable ADB or USB debugging, and just enable it because it will allow the phone and the computer to communicate with each other through the USB cable. The details in enabling this will differ depending on your Android phone brand, but generally it will be on the same structure, like under the settings and under system information, and then build number. Now I have a Samsung phone here, so I have to go system information inside settings. Then here's the build number. Then I have to tap it many times, like five to 10 times until a prompt saying developer options enabled chosen. Now, depending on your phone, you, you might have to go back or on the same screen, locate developer options. Open that and scroll down to locate and tap to enable ADB debugging or USB debugging. I already got mine enabled, so here it goes. So are you good so far? If you've encountered any problems or if anything didn't work or if you're lost, just comment down below and I'll try to assist as soon as I can. Don't worry, the next two steps are easy peasy. Step three or four, connect the phone. So just connect your phone to your machine and tap allow or enable if a prompt shows up. 
Now, step four of four, run the software. Finally, run screen copy. So if you are on Windows, just go to the folder that you've downloaded earlier, you've unzipped, and look for run.exe file. Double tap on that, and within three seconds, your Android phone screen should show up. Now, if you're using Mac OS or Linux, just open terminal, type scrcpy, press enter, and within three seconds, you should see your Android phone screen on your desktop or laptop screen. And that's it. Next time you need to run this, just connect your phone to your machine. If you're on Windows, double tap on run.exe. If you're on Mac OS or Linux, just open terminal, type scrcpy, press enter, and it should start mirroring your Android phone screen. If you have trouble making this work, just comment down below and I'll assist you as soon as I can. And if this did work for you, then let us know below and send thanks to the folks who created this software. If this video was helpful, kindly like it so others looking for the same solution will find it easily. If you enjoyed this content, I invite you to subscribe as you might enjoy the rest of the content on this channel. So that wraps it up. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.